Shalom, shalom, praise the Lord. How's everybody doing on today? God bless you all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Adonai, Elohim. We just bless you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you on today. You say that when we worship you, we must worship you in spirit and in truth. And Adonai Elohim, our Savior, we just thank you that you are leading and guiding us into all truth. You, you want us to receive the knowledge of the truth, the love of the truth, and you want us to be cleansed from the truth. And we just thank you that your, your truth is spreading and your gospel is moving by leaps and bounds into the earth realm. You said in your word that you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh. That is your promise. You said that the Holy Spirit is a promise unto us, our children, and those that are far off. And we just bless you and we thank you that you are pouring out your spirit upon all flesh, that we may prophesy, that we may live holy. You said in your word that you have given us the tools on how to live a godly life. And we just bless you. We thank you. We thank you, Adonai. We thank you. We just thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. We just thank you for giving us your strength to travail in the spirit. We thank you. Hey, Rusha, Raya Bose, Coriandera Bose, Katarabaya. Hey, Rabababasha. You thank, we thank you. You said in your word that out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. And we just thank you. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for teaching us how to fight the good fight of faith. In spite of what's going on in this world, we just thank you. We thank you. We thank you with Abu Seh. Ah, Shaya. Abba Roshe. Yandid Abu Abba. We thank you for giving us the desire to be sanctified and to be righteous and to be holy before you, Elohim. We just thank you for, for giving us the strength and the ability to break the powers of the enemy with your word. You said in your word that isn't my word like a hammer that breaks. We thank you for imparting the breaker anointing in us. So that we can learn how to break stuff off of, off of things. Break things. We, we prophesy the breaker anointing is breaking up things. We prophesy that the breaker anointing is breaking up the fallow ground. We just thank you, Lord, for restoring families, restoring marriages. We thank you for restoration, deliverance and making us whole. We just bless you and we honor you in Yahshua's mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Well, God bless you all. Thank you, Lord, for the move of God. Thank you, uh, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, we are living in a time where the power of the Lord is resting upon his people, his glory is resting on us, but we have to allow it. We have to allow it. We just thank you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you. Thank you, Lord. All right, today we're going to be talking about uh, the acts of uh, the Holy Apostle Thomas. Thank you, Lord. 
and it's in the link that I have on Facebook. Uh, if you click on the tortillion.org, you will find the Acts of the Holy Apostles. A lot of those stories are just stories about uh, miracle signs and wonders that the Lord used the apostles to perform. It's a lot of stories in there. You got the Acts of the Holy Apostle Thomas. You have the story about when Yahshua went down to hell to free the souls um, after he had resurrected after three days and three nights. It's a lot of stories in there that's giving you a lot of good information about the acts of the apostles, uh, Thomas with Andrew, Bartholomew, uh, Paul, even more or more stories about John, uh, Paul and other stories as well. It's very enlightening and it will, it re will really encourage uh, not only the body of Yahshua, but also people that are called into the apostolic anointing. It will really encourage you to read these stories because it's going to be giving us more of a glimpse of what the Lord is going to use us to do in the days ahead. So I'm going to be reading from the Acts of the uh, uh, Acts of the Apostle Thomas. There are actually three stories in the Acts of Thomas, but I'm only only going to be going through two stories. Um, one of the stories about the Acts of the Apostle Thomas is a story about a young man and a, and this dragon, the dragon that comes from a den that possesses uh, the spirit of this dragon has a, um, has a lineage of the serpent. And this dragon uh, really is Baal. Baal, the dragon. Okay, so Baal, this spirit of Baal uh, swells up inside of this young man and Apostle Thomas rebukes the dragon and the dragon goes back into the abyss where he comes from. And then there's another story about uh, this demonic spirit that dwells in, a, in, in this woman. All right. But it's another story, too. Actually, it's four stories. It's, uh, it's, it's one story is about how the Lord used Apostle Thomas to go to, go to India and then the second story is about this dragon and the young man. And then the third story is about a demon that dwells in the woman. And then also the fourth story is about a young man who kills the maiden. But we're going to be going through two stories. The first story is about the dragon and the young man. We're going to be going through scriptures to explain what we're talking about. Thank you, Lord. I just thank the Lord for just moving on us and blessing us in prayer before we started. God bless, God, God is good. All right, the first story, uh, Apostle Thomas um, is going somewhere where the Lord, the spirit of the Lord has led him. And so it says that in the apostle went forth uh, to where the Lord had bidden him. And when he came near the second milestone, he turned a little out of the way and saw a body uh, of a beautiful young youth lying. And he said, Lord, what it what was it for this that thou broughtest me out to come here? I just want to say something in the times to come when we are really called into ministry, especially in the apostolic and in the prophetic, there are there are going to be some places uh, where the Lord is going to lead us and we're going to be uh, running into some very, very, uh, some big stuff. We're going to be running into some milestones because here the Lord is leading Apostle Thomas. We don't know where the Lord is going to lead us to. Uh, we just have to be prepared. That's why the scripture says that we have to be instant in season and out of season. Uh, one of the things that I do want to point out is that we have to make sure that we are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. 
in ministry nowadays, there are a lot of people that need deliverance. There are a lot of people that is in ministry nowadays and they are not saved. The church has gotten away from salvation and we have gotten away from salvation so far that when ministers and preachers and different people, when they start doing a lot of things in their flesh and you see all these controversies and all these scandals, we're trying to figure out why all of this stuff is happening. It's, it's happening because they're not saved or they're, they just need deliverance. All right. So in this day and time, it's a lot of people in ministry. They don't have no power. Okay, they don't have no power or they need a breakthrough or they need deliverance. All they're doing is walking in formality. There's no power. There's no deliverance. There's no change. There's nothing. You know, Paul says that the that there has to be the manifestation of truth. Uh, you first have to have the truth of the spirit of truth in you for it to be manifested. And so people are just having church and they're just going through formality, but there's no power in it. I don't know about y'all, but I am tired of dealing with folk who don't have no power. There are a lot of people that have gifts and they they can prophesy to you and they can tell you all type of good things, but then they'll turn around and they'll stab you in the back or they'll do something weird or they'll do something very unorthodox because they need deliverance. They need help. You know, this is why Paul said, uh, I have to make sure that my body is in, in sub subjection, that I won't be a castaway. We got a lot of castaway apostles out here. They doing something and everything. Remember, Paul said that you're going to have those that's going to transform themselves into apostles. All right. So this is Apostle Thomas. And so then Apostle Thomas says, and when he came near the second milestone, he turned a little out of the way and saw the body of a beautiful youth lying. And he said, Lord, was it for this that thou broughtest me out to come here? He says that I may see this trial. And he says, thy will therefore be done as thou purposes. He says, and he began to pray and to say, Lord, judge of the living and of those that are lying dead. So we know that when we read, we know that when we go into uh, the scriptures, right? We know that in Acts chapter two, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 10, verse 42, when the apostles was preaching, they, uh, when you look at Acts 10 and 42, they says, and he ordered us to preach everything and to testify that Yeshua is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all the living and the dead. Then when you look at 2 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 through 4, Peter, Paul tells Peter, he said, I solemnly urge you in the presence of Elohim and Yeshua, who will someday, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom, right? Look at verse 2, he says, preach the word of Elohim. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. See that? So we have to be uh, ready at all times, right? He says, patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with what? Good teaching, right? Look at verse three. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. People don't want to hear wholesome teaching no more. That is the time we are in. Okay, we people want to follow people that's in their flesh. Itchy, look what it says. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. See that? So, it's, so Paul is telling them, that these people are going to actually look for teachers to lie to them. And it says they will reject the truth and chase after myths. Judge of the living, right? 
It says, look at that. It says, uh, judge of the living of those that are lying for the souls, right? Let me see. Hold on. Let me get it. It says, judge of the living and those that are lying dead. So that's the last part of 2 Timothy chapter 4. So that's basically what is happening right now. That's what I was talking about a few minutes ago about what's going on in the body of Yeshua right now. There's a lot of people that's not saved. The Bible says you will know them by their fruit. All right, now people want to go and listen to what these people got to say. Fine, let them. All right, here, here. I'm, I'm saying to me, I'm not dealing with people that is, that's in ministry that's not saved. You got to be born again through the water and of the spirit. I don't want to deal with nobody that does not have no power over themselves. The Bible says that after the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. Now look at this. It says, it says, uh, Lord, it's, I'm going back to the Acts of Thomas. It says, judge of the living and those that are lying dead and Lord of all and father, father, not only of the souls that are in bodies, but also of those that have gone out of them for the souls that are in pollutions. It says, thou art Lord and judge to come at this time. When I call upon thee and show thy glory upon him that is lying down here, and he turned and said to those that followed him, it says, this affair has not, not happened idly, but the enemy has wrought and affected this, that he may make an assault upon him. And you see that he has availed himself of, of no other form and has wrought through no other living being, but through this subject. So the Holy Spirit is telling Thomas that this spirit has in, has polluted this young man, right? It has polluted this young man so that this young man can be subject to this spirit. That's what's happening in the body of Yeshua right now. You got a lot of people that have taken oaths with demons and spirits, and we're trying to figure out why they're doing what they're doing because they're such and such, and because they have a big church and they're doing this and they're doing that because they are not saved. They're not born again through the water of the spirit. They don't have no power. They're in their flesh. They're being controlled by demonic forces. You can read about that when you read in Ephesians chapter two or chapter three, when Paul is talking about how the God of this world uses people that want to disobey the Lord. See, that's why we got to be obedient and obey. It's a lot of people that is not obedient. I don't want to be fellowshipping and being around nobody that is not obedient to the Lord because it hinders you. That's why this walk with the Lord is lonely. Sometimes people just want to be around folk and they full of spirits and they can be pumping you up, but they can be hindering you and stabbing you in the back at the same time. Look at what it says. It says, and when the apostle had thus spoken, behold, a great dragon came forth, came forth from his den. So this dragon, this serpent is coming from its den, coming from the abyss, right? And this dragon can very well be Baal, all right? And it says, knocking his head and brandishing his tail down to the ground and using a loud voice said to the apostle, I shall say before thee for what cause I have put him to death, since thou art here in order to reprove my works. And the apostle said, yes, say on. And the dragon, there is a certain woman in this place, exceedingly beautiful. And as she was passing by, I saw her and I fell in love with her and I followed and watched her. And I found this young man kissing her. So this dragon, this demon is telling Apostle Thomas that I saw this woman and I fell in love with her and I followed and watched her. So that all goes to tell you when you read in the book of Tobit in the Apocrypha and the book of Tobit in the Apocrypha, there is a story about a woman where this demon named Osmodeus, 
Osmodeus is a demon that likes to try to break up marriages and relationships and different things, right? And this demon, Osmodeus, was in love with this woman. And this Osmodeus demon would use this woman to kill her husbands. She, she would marry like one man after another. And she was married seven times. And every time she married a man and she had sex with the man, uh, the men would die. And so after the seventh man had died, her handmaiden said, um, her handmaid said, how come you have to find out why every time you marry a man, they die? And she found out that she had the spirit of Osmodeus. And so she had to get delivered from that spirit. OK, so Baal this this dragon, Baal, the dragon here is and, and it could very well be Osmodeus that's using this woman. Right. So this dragon is telling Thomas. He said there was a woman that was exceedingly beautiful. So that lets you know that demons and dragons, they don't deal with women that is not, quote unquote, attractive. They know they can use women or they, or they can use men that can be very alluring and very beautiful and very voluptuous to the world. Right. And it says she was exceeding. This demon is telling Thomas she's exceedingly beautiful as she was passing by. And I saw her and I fell in love with her. And I followed and watched her. And I found this young man kissing her. And he had intercourse with her. So this dragon demon is telling Thomas that this beautiful woman that he'd been watching and that he's in love with had sex with this woman and did with her other shameful things. So this dragon followed this woman, fell in love with her, and then she found a man and kissed her and they had intercourse. And, and then it says, and did with her other shameful things. So there were other uh, perverted things that this young man did with this woman that this dragon was in love with, right? And to me, indeed, it was pleasant to tell thee this, for I know that thou art the twin brother of Yahshua, and always bring us our race to naught. So this dragon knows that the apostles and Yahshua would always rebuke and destroy these demonic spirits in different regions and different things. See, these demons, they know people. That's why in the book of Acts, when the demon said, Paul, I know, Christ, I know, but who are you? <laughs> these demons know when you have power and when you don't. If there, are, if there are leaders and ministers and people in ministry that is doing things out of order, that means they are polluted with a spirit, all right? If, if, if there's no other, people shouldn't be trying to figure out why people are doing things, all right? So that means this young man made himself available to allow this dragon that was in love with this woman to do all this perverted stuff with her, right? And it says, look what he's saying. He says, but not wishing to harass her, I did not at this time put him to death. But I watched him passing by in the evening and I struck him and I killed him. And especially as he had dared to do this on the Lord's day. And so, and the apostle inquired of him saying, tell me, of what seed and of what race thou art. And so this demon and dragon tells, uh, tells Apostle Thomas, he said to him, he said, I am the offspring of the race of the serpent. So this dragon, this Baal spirit, this Osmodeus demon is an offspring of the serpent that was in the garden. And, and, and he says, I am the offspring of the race of the serpent and hurtful of the hurtful. I am the son of him who struck the four brothers that stood. He said, I am the son of him who sits on the throne of destruction. So this dragon uh, that is the son of the one who sits on the throne of destruction is Baal. So this dragon is the son of the demon Baal, all right? And takes his own from what he has lent. He said, I am the son that, uh, that the apostate who encircles the globe. I am the kinsman to him who is outside of the ocean, whose tail lies in his mouth. So that could be very well Leviathan, right? It says, I am he 
who went into paradise through the hedge and spoke with Eve, with what my father bade me to speak to her. So we got to remember when you read in the Apocalypse of Moses, when it's a, which is in the Sudi Epigrapha, all right, it, did, it gives you a backstory about the garden, okay? The, 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 the Satan entered the garden and began to start talking with the serpent, with the snake, all right? Some people would say, well, uh, how can Satan talk to animals? During that time, animals were able to talk, all right? That's why when you look at these old cartoons that used to come on, and the, and the cartoons be about animals living an everyday life, and they would be talking. Be why? Because Hollywood knew know that at one time animals were talking. But when Adam fell and sin came into the world, that the animals stopped talking. All right. So he's telling Thomas, "I'm the same beast. I'm the same serpent that spoke with Eve." Right. He says, "I am he who inflamed and fired Cain." to kill his brother. And, th and through me, thorns and prickles sprang up from the ground, right? And so he said, I am he who cast the angels from above and bound them down by the desires of women that, that earth bound. That's why he's telling Thomas that I'm really in love with women. See what I'm saying? It says, children may be produced forth them and I may work my will in them, right? So this is why my mother used to always tell me, you gotta be careful who you have children by. My mother used to always say that. I'm going to tell you why my mother used to say that. When I was a kid, I would, I would, you know, do things that would favor my father, right? And my mother would be like, oh, Lord, help me, Lord. You got to be careful who you have children by because I would do something that my father would do. You see what I'm saying? Now, look at this. It says, I am he who hardened the heart of Pharaoh that he should murder the children of Israel and keep them down by the hard yoke of slavery. I am the one, I am he who caused the multitude to err in the desert when they made the calf. So this is talking about when Moses went to pray, uh, this spirit used the children of Israel to start worshiping the calf, right? And it says, I am he, I am, I am he who inflamed Herod and incited Sosiophius to to the lying tales of the falsehood before Pilate. So all of these spirits was using Pilate and different things, right? It says, for me, for this became me, and I am him who inflamed Judas. So he's telling, he's telling Thomas, Apostle Thomas, what spirit used Judas to sell out Yeshua, right? And brought him that he may betray Yeshua. It's I am he who inhabits the hope and holds the abyss of Tartarus, that is in the in the underworld, right? That is in the underworld, right? It says Tartarus, that's that's an underworld abyss, okay? And it says, and the Son of God has wronged me against my will and has gathered his own out of me. I am the kinsman of him who is to come from the east, to whom also the power has been given to whatever he will upon the earth. And so, and now look at this. It says, and that dragon having thus spoken in all the hearing of all the multitude. The, uh, now that means that this dragon is saying all of this around other people other than the apostle Thomas, right? And it says, and the apostle raised his voice on high and said, cease henceforth, O thou mayest unbanished and be ashamed and altogether put to death. So now Apostle Thomas is rebuking this dragon, not right? And it says, for the end of thy destruction is at hand. And thou, and do not dare to say what thou has done through thy dependence. And I order thee in the name of that Yeshua who until even now makes a struggle against you for the sake of his own human beings to suck out the poison which thou has put into this man. So this young man that Thomas sees, this dragon put a poison in him. You see this? This is what's going on in the body of Yeshua. These demons and spirits have put poison in people. Okay, this is why we gotta be careful who we fellowship with. It's not just in the world. We gotta be careful who we fellowship with y'all, right? And it says, and draw it forth and take it out of him. And the dragon said, 
the time of our end is by no means at hand. And thou hast said, why thou hast forced me to take out what I have put in him and to die before the time. And it says, and surely when my father shall draw forth and suck it out, what he has put me in, into the creation, then his end will come. And the apostle said to him, show us therefore now the nature of thy father. And the dragon went up and put his mouth upon the womb of the young man and sucked the gall out of it. And in a short time, the skin of the young man, which was like purple, grew white and the dragon swelled. So when this dragon sucked this poison out of, out of this young man that he put in him, now the dragon is beginning to swell. Remember we were talking about that when I was talking about the apostolic order of the apostles and the commandments of the apostles. When one of the apostles was talking about if you allow a spirit to dwell in you, that that spirit will swell up. Right. So now it says and the dragon swelled up and when the dragon had drawn up all the gall into himself, the young man sprang up and stood and ran and fell at the apostles feet. And the dragon being swelled up, shrank out the diet, shrank out and died. And the poison and gall were poured forth. And, and in the place where the poison was poured forth, there was made a great chasm. So it talks about that in the book of Enoch, when, it, when the Lord gave Enoch the vision of the chasm, when it shows where people go when they die, they go into the underworld, they go into a holding place, all right? And it says, and that dragon was swallowed up. And the apostle said to the king and his brother, Take workmen and fill up the place in which the dragon has been swallowed up and lay foundations and build houses above it that it may be, may, that it may be a dwelling place for the strangers. Y'all see that? So I just want to read a few scriptures that's dealing with that. Isn't that interesting? Look at this when it says, and it talks about the, um, the souls of the pollutions, right? When you look at Revelations chapter 11, verse 18, it says the nations were filled with wrath, but now the time of your wrath has come. It is, it is time to judge the dead. Remember, Paul talks about that at one time we were what? Dead and trespasses and sins. People want to know why the government and senators and congressmen and different people be doing a whole lot of junk. It's because they're dead. All right. They're dead and trespasses and sins, just like we were at one time. Right. And it said it's time. This is Revelations eleven eighteen. The nations were filled with wrath, which means that the nations were filled with all these demons and these dragons. Right. And it says at the time and it says, but now the time of your wrath has come. Right. Uh, it says as it is time to judge the dead and reward your servants the prophets, as well as who? Your holy people. All who fear your name, from the least to the greatest, it is time to destroy. All who have caused what? Destruction on the earth. That's Revelation 11, verse 18. It's time for that to happen, right? Look at this. This is why the devil is acting really honorary right now, right? Look at uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. And it says, and when the people escape from the wickedness of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Yeshua and then get tangled up and enslaved by sin again, they were worse off than before. Look at verse 21. It says, it will be better if they had known the way to righteousness than to know it and then reject the command that were given to do what? To live a holy life. All right. Look at this. Uh, let's see. Let's look at Luke 15, 21. Luke 15, 21 said, his son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. And I am no longer worthy of being called your son whose works are light and whose deeds are truth. That's talking about the prodigal son, see? See, that's when, we, when we're in the Lord and we slipping and dipping and tripping, we be like, Lord, what, what was I thinking? Help me, Lord. I, I don't know. Let me tell you something. I don't know about y'all. 
I am not giving up the oil that the Lord has put in me to no demon in hell, to nobody. I'm telling you, I am at a point in my life where I am not giving up the oil that the Lord has put in me. It is priceless. You got to suffer for this oil. You're going to have to go through some battles in life. You're going to have to be rejected. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be alone. You're going to feel all type of stuff when you're going through the process of the Lord building you up to be what he wants you to be. There are times when the Lord is not going to give you no answers. And sometimes we tend to want to go back to sin because it's easy. All right. The Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. All right. But if we can just get through that process, people of God, stop giving up on the Lord. You can't give up on the Lord because you don't want to go through the process and then want to talk about how, how great he is. You don't even know how great he is because you ain't gave him a chance to prove himself through your life. It's a process. The Bible says that when somebody comes into Christ, they are what? A brand new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. But that comes with a process. It don't happen overnight. All right. Look at this. Look at. Uh, well, let me see. Let's go. Let's go back to the Acts of the Apostle Thomas. All right. We, we are reading in the Acts of the Apostle Thomas. If anybody want to know. The link for the Tortillion is on there and you can read it. It'll, it'll show you, right? All right. So now Thomas um, Thomas has rebuked this uh, dragon and he goes back into the abyss. And so the young man now, right? Remember, uh, Apostle Thomas ordered this dragon to suck the poison out of the young man that he put in him. And so the dragon become, be, became swelled up by his own venom. See that? It's just like um, when you look at the movie Aliens, you notice the aliens, when somebody kills an alien, their blood is acid, right? But when you look at Aliens versus Predator, remember when Sanaya Lathan was on Aliens versus Predator, the Predator showed her that the only part of the of the alien's acid blood that couldn't penetrate was the, you know, that 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 real long part that's on that alien, that head, right? When the remember when the predator put the acid on that head part of that alien, it didn't burn. That part of that alien, that the alien's acid can't burn that part. Right? But it can burn all the other parts of the body structure of that alien. You see what I'm saying? So when this dragon that put this gall poison in this young man, when Apostle Thomas ordered him to suck it back out, he that dragon swelled up. See that? That's, I just wanted to explain that. I hope that's a good explanation to what we're talking about. All right. So we're going back to the Acts of the Apostle Thomas. So look at what it says here. It says, and the young man said to the apostle, with many tears, I have sinned against the God proclaimed by thee. Ain't that what the prodigal son just said, right? And it says, and against thee, but I ask pardon of thee, for thou art a man having two forms, and whatever thou wishes thou art found, and thou art held in by no one. And as I see, for I beheld that man, and when I stood beside thee, who also said to thee, I have many wonders to show by means of thee, and I have great works to accomplish by means of thee. For thou, for which thou art obtained a reward, and thou shalt make many to live, and they shall be in the repulse and eternal light as the children of Elohim. Do thou thou for bring alive, he says, speak it to thee about me, this young man who has been cast down by the enemy and in all time be the overseer of him. Thou hast then well come hither and again thou shall be well to go away to him, he being not at all forsaken by thee. And I am without care and reproach for the dawn is risen up, risen upon me from the care of the night. 
and I am at rest and I have been released from him who exasperated me to do these things. So in the beginning of this story, this dragon uh, was in love with this woman and this dragon watched the woman. And then the dragon saw this young man that he put poison in. And he watched the young man and the dragon watched the young man and the young lady have sexual intercourse. And then this young man did all type of vile things to the girl, all right, to the woman. So that's what this young man is saying. So he says, he says, I have been released from him, the dragon, who has exasperated me to do such things. For I have sinned against him who taught me the contrary. And I have destroyed him who is the kinsman of the night, who forced me to sin by his own practices. And I have found that kinsman of mine who was like the light. I have destroyed him who darkens and blinds those who are subject to him, lest they should know what they are doing and are ashamed of their works. We living in a time now where people are not ashamed about what they do and we in the last days, all right? There's a remnant, there's a small portion of people who wanna live saved nowadays. That's just the truth. Remember the Bible says that the kingdom is only for a few. It ain't for everybody. But, but you got people that like to interrogate and like to come and be with the tech, with, with the wheat to try to pretend. That's what's happening right now. The reason why the tear is trying to come upon the wheat is because the tear wants the remnants oil. They'll do whatever they can. Right? Look at this. Uh, it says, and ashamed of their works, withdrew themselves from them and their deeds have an end. And I have found him whose works are light and who deeds are truth, hey, da -da -da and of which whoever does them shall not repent. I have, I have been set free also from him in whom falsehood abides. There's nothing but falsehood in, Yish, in, in uh, the enemy. That's why when you read in the book of Isaiah, they talking about that we have made uh, a covenant with falsehood. People like falsehood. It makes their flesh feel good. Right. It says whom darkness as a covering goes before and shame conducting herself imputedly to idleness follows after. And I have found also him who shows me what is beautiful, that I may lay hold of it. The son of the truth, who is kinsman of accord of concord, who driving away the mist enlightens his own creation and heals his wounds and overturns his enemies. But I entreat thee, O man of God, make me again to behold and see him. Now become hidden from me, that I may also hear his voice, the wonders of which I cannot declare, for it is not of the nature of the bodily organ. Y'all see that? So now, since this dragon has sucked this poison out of this young man, he, he's, he's, he's come back to himself. He's like, oh, Lord, I have sinned. You see that? People got to get the poison out. We got to get the poison out, saints. Look at this. Let's go to uh, John chapter three. I'm sorry. Yeah, John chapter three, verse 21. It says, but those who do what is right come to the light. So others can see that they are doing what God wants. See, we got to keep the light on. We can't give up on the Lord and be like, oh, Lord, I don't want to go through this trial. No, we got to let the light shine no matter what. We got to keep each other in prayer, y'all. John 3 and 21, it says, but those who do what is right come to the light. So others can see that, see that they are doing what God wants. Look at 1 John 1 and 6. And so it says, so we are lying if we say, we have fellowship with Elohim, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. This is what the church has taught us. The church has taught us not to practice the truth. We haven't been taught to practice the truth. Listen, 
1 Timothy 2 and 4 says that we have to have the knowledge of the truth. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 says that we have to have the love of the truth. 1 Peter chapter 1 says that we have to have that we have to be cleansed through the truth. Now the Lord is saying through 1 John 1 and 6 that we have to practice it. We got to practice it, y'all. Look at John 8 and 31. It says, Yeshua said to the people and believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. See that? Isaiah 28, 15. You boast we have struck a bargain to cheat death and have made a deal to dodge the grave. The coming destruction can never touch us, for we have built a strong refuge made of lies and deception. That is Isaiah 28 and 15. And that's true. That's a prophetic word. They have cheated death. They have made a deal with the enemy. And they thinking that the coming destruction will never touch them because the devil has lied to them to think that he's going to win the battle against Yeshua in the end. Look at this. It says we have built a strong refuge, strong. I'm telling you, lies and deceptions can be strong if you believe it. You see this? This is Isaiah 28, 15. It says, for we have built a strong refuge. That means that lies and deceptions have become their strength. Their refuge. The Bible says that the Lord is our refuge and strength. They have made Satan their refuge. Why? Because Satan is a deceiver and he is a liar and the father of it. <laughs> they they letting you know they didn't. That's what these preachers are doing. They getting up there talking about Yeshua, but but Satan is their father. And we wonder why we crazy. Generally, I'm just I'm trying to be diplomatic because I don't listen to them Negroes. I don't like lying preachers. The Lord don't like them. Let me tell you something about religion. When you are in Yeshua, let me tell you what the Lord told me this week. Y'all may shout on this and you may not. The Lord told me, he said, Eric, he said, you don't need Christianity or any other religion, because you got me. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Why do people need Christianity when Yeshua is the truth? You see how the devil has, has, has you see what the enemy has done, y'all? Think about it for a minute. If, if Yeshua is the way, the truth, and the life, that's all you need. So why do you need Christianity or any other religion? Think about that. If you look at a chart, if you, if you go to Google right now and you type in the religions of the world and you go to Google images, I guarantee you, you're going to see all of the religions of the world and you're going to see Christianity in there. And that'll make you think, hmm. Why is Christianity one of the religions of the world? Think about that for a minute. Yeshua said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I don't need Christianity. I don't need religion. All I need is him. And he made a covenant with me. That's it. That's all you need. You don't need nothing else. You got people saying, Yeshua, he's the way, the truth, and the life. But I love being a Christian. You got to choose. <laughs> you can't serve two masters. Now, I'm telling you, the Lord told me that as plain as day. It makes sense. Sometimes the Lord can tell you something so simple that it'd be so powerful. You'd be like, whoa, wow. <laughs> Y'all see that? All right. Let me keep reading here so I can get through this. All right, so I'm back in the Acts of the book of Thomas. And it says, and when the apostle had thus spoken, he went into the city, holding that young man by the hand and saying to him, 
Those things which thou hast beheld, my child, are a few out of the many which God has. So you see what Apostle is telling him? Apostle Thomas is saying, look, the Lord got more for you. <laughs> Sometimes people come in church and like, ooh, the Lord has did what he did. All right, let me uh, stop right here. I don't need no more, God. We think we have arrived. That's how I used to think. I used to think when the Lord was revealing things to me, I'm like, all right, Lord, I'm good. You can go on somewhere now. Yeah, I'm good. And then another trial come, another test come, bam. I'll be like, oh, God, I need you. <laughs> That's how the Lord worked. We think we have arrived, and then the Lord come with something else, bam. And then we come crying to him because we need more of him every day, all day. Look at this. It says, it says, my, he says, he said, look, those things which thou hast beheld, my child, are a few out of the many which God has. For it is not about these things that appear that the good news is brought to us, but greater things than these are promised to us. And as much as we are in the body, so he's letting this young man know that there is more. There is there's more mysteries. There's more wisdom. There's more manifold wisdom. There's more secrets that God wants to give. It's everlasting. It's eternal. He said, we cannot tell and speak out of what he will do for our souls if we say that he affords us light. It is seen by us and we have it. And if riches they exist and appear in this world, and we name them, since it has been said with difficulty, will a rich man enter into the kingdom of heaven? That's in Matthew chapter 19, verse 23, right? And it said, if we speak of the fine clothing which they who delight in this life put on, it has been said, they wear soft things in king's palaces. And of costly dinners about these, we have received a commandment to keep away from them, not to be burdened by carousing and drunkenness of the cares of this life. What is Thomas saying there? If you go to, uh, where am I at? If you go to Matthew chapter 11, verse eight, what did Yeshua say about that? He says, were you expecting to see a man dressed in expensive clothes? No, people with expensive clothes live in palaces where soft things are in king's palaces. You see what I'm saying? Look at Romans 13 and four. It says the authorities, it said the authorities are God's servants sent for your good. But if you are doing wrong, of course, you should be afraid for they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. Y'all see that? Uh, look, at, uh, look at Luke 12 and 34. It says, wherever the treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. See that? That's what Thomas is talking about here. Uh, look at this. It says, not to. I'm going back to Thomas now. It says not to be burdened by carousing and drunkenness and the cares of life. All, as, as also in the gospel, it has been said, take no heed for your life. What you eat or what you drink, nor for your body, what you shall put on, because this life is more than food. Remember, Yeshua said that. He said, don't worry about what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink the next day. And it says, and the body then clothing. And if we speak of the rest lasting only for a season, its judgment has also been ordained. But we speak about the upper world. So remember, uh, remember Paul said to set your affections on things that are above and not things that are on the earth. So Thomas is saying, look, we speak about the upper world, about Elohim and his angels and the ambrosial food, that's talking about the manna from heaven, about garments that last and not and not and, and become not old. Remember, look at this. Remember in Psalms. Where is that scripture at in the book of Psalms? Uh, help me, Lord. When you read in Psalms 104, verse 2, it says, You are dressed in a robe of light. 
you stretch out the starry curtain of the heaven. That means that when you read, listen, y'all, when y'all read in the legends of the Jews and that link that I got there, the book of the legends of the Jews, right? When you read about the creation of the world, when you read about the part where it talks about the first day, it says that the heavens were fashioned from the light of God's garments. Ooh. So that's why David said in Psalms 102 verse four, when he was speaking of Elohim, he said, you are dressed in a robe of light. You stretch out the stirry curtain of the heaven. So the heavens was fashioned after the Lord's garment, his light, right? Because when you read in 1 Timothy 6 and 16, uh, Paul tells Timothy that he alone is immortal and dwells in unapproachable light. That means you can't even approach him. That's why Thomas is saying what he's saying here. Look at this. He says, I'm going back to Thomas. It says, we speak of, uh, help me, Lord, where am I? Okay, he says, we speak of the upper world, about Elohim and his angels, about ambrosial food, that's manna, about garments that last and, not be, and become not old, about those things which I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have come into the heart of sinful men. That's in Ephesians, right? What God has prepared for those that love him. Do thou also therefore believe in him that thou mayest live and have confidence in him and thou shalt never die. For he is not persuaded by gifts that should offer, that should is offered them to him, nor does he want sacrifices that thou should sacrifice to him, but look to him and thou shall look, shall not look in vain. For his comeliness and desirable beauty will make him love, will make thee love him, and neither will he allow thee to turn thyself away from him. Y'all see that? This is good. And so, and when the apostle was thus speaking to the young man, a great multitude joined them, and the apostle looked and saw them lifting themselves up that they may see him, and they went up into elevated places. And the apostle said to him, Ye men who have come to the assembly of Yeshua, and who wish to believe in Yeshua, take an example from this and see that if you do not get, do not get high up and you cannot see who, who am small and cannot get a look of me, who am like yourselves. If then you cannot see me, who am like yourselves, unless you raise yourselves a little from the earth, how can you see him who lives above? And it is now found below unless you first raise yourselves out of the form of behavior and unprofitable deeds and troublesome desires. Some of this stuff that we desire is troubling, y'all. We Sometimes we don't need it. You see what he's saying? Look what he's saying. He says, and he says, unless you first raise yourselves out of form of behavior and unprofitable deeds and troublesome desires, and the riches that are left behind here and create things that are of the earth and not grow old and that grow old and the garments that are destroyed and the beauty that ages and vanishes away. What he's saying is we got to stop dealing with unprofitable deeds and troublesome desires. We have to desire what the Lord desires, right? Look what he's saying here. He says, Form of behavior, unprofitable deeds, troublesome desires, riches that are left behind here and create things that are of the earth and that grow old and the garments that are destroyed and the beauty that ages and vanishes away. Yea, even out of the whole body in which all these have been stored past and which grows old and become dust, returning into its own nature. For all these things, the body itself sets up. Men and women, we go through this stuff all the time. Men, we are we be alone and we be wondering why we didn't treat that woman right. We be having a lot of pride. Now you're by yourself. Same with the women. At one time, some of our women were beautiful. Now they you they use their beauty to manipulate men. Now they're 55 and 60 years old and they by themselves. 
That's why the Bible says that we have to enjoy our partners at our youth. Grow old with somebody. I wish I had a listen. I'm 48 now. I'm still young. <laughs> but I'm just saying, some of us are getting to that time where it's time to get married. Whoever the Lord wants you to marry, you better run to him. We're not in our 20s no more. We can't be having preferences like we used to. Oh, I want to be with her. I want to be with him. And then we, them people would have to destroy our lives at one time. Wasn't even worth it. See that? This is what Thomas is talking about. Unprofitable, unprofitable deeds, form of behavior, troublesome desires, riches that are left behind. Garments that are destroyed, beauty that ages and vanishes away. I saw a lady, uh, they had on the news here in Chicago, it was a lady, she celebrated her birthday. She was 107 years old. She didn't look all that good, but she was still moving and dancing at her party. She's 107. Uh, beauty that ages and vanishes away, even out of the whole body in which these things have been stored past, which grows old and becomes dust, returning into its own nature. For all these things, the body itself sets up. It says, but rather believe in our Lord Yeshua, whom we proclaim to you in order that your hope may be upon him and that you may have life in him to ages of ages that he may be your fellow traveler in this land and may release you from error and may become a haven for you in troublous sea. And there shall you be, uh, there shall for you, Yon, also a fountain dwelling out in this thirsty land and a fold full of food in the place of the hungry and the rest and rest for your souls and also a physician for your bodies. Then the multitude, the multitude of those assembled that heard wept and said to the apostle, O man of Elohim, as for the Elohim whom thou proclaimest, we dare not say that, th that we are his because our works which we have done are alien from him, not pleasing to him. But if he has compassion upon us and pities us and delivers us, overlooking our former things, former doings, and if he has set us free from the evil things which we did when we were in error and shall take not take and shall take and shall not take into the account nor keep the recollection of our former sins, we shall become his servants and we shall do his will to the end. And the apostle answered and said to him, he does not reckon against you the sins which you did bringing to error, being in error, but he overlooks your transgressions which you have done in ignorance. So this is why the Bible says that at one time, the Lord winked at our ignorance. Some things we didn't know no better. All right. When I started dealing with certain women in my life, the Lord was like, all right, you're going to deal with that again because you're going to find another woman and she's going to do the same thing. <laughs> I was like, all right, Lord. Look at this. <laughs> uh, the part when he was talking about troublesome desires, right? When you look at four, Mark Mark 4, 19, it says, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the what? The worries of life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things, right? When the Lord promises us things, we cannot get into un unhealthy desires because the Lord is... Excuse me, the Lord is saying, I got a promise for you right here, but we're still after things of the world. We can't do both. We'd be like, okay, Lord, but I need this right here. I know you promised me this, but I, I got to have that. And then we miss out. And then when we miss out, the Lord wait for us. We got to wait a long season again for it because we are bombarded by the worries of this life. That's what he said in Mark 4, 19. We cannot get Elohim's promises. Look at this. It says, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of life and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things. That's Mark 4 and 19. 
Look at 1 Timothy 6 and 9. It says, but people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction so that so no fruit is produced. That's all the church has been promising people. Blessings. God getting ready to do this for you. God getting ready to do that. What about the promises that he has promised us? They're not, they're not, they have not tapped into the ram of the spirit to explain to you what it is that the Lord has. Look at Isaiah 51 and 6. It says, look up to the skies above and gaze down on the earth below for the skies will disappear like smoke and the earth will wear out like a piece of clothing. The people of the earth will die like flies, my, but my salvation will last forever. My righteous rule will never end. Look at Hebrews 8 and 13. It says, when God speaks of the new covenant, it means he has made the first one obsolete. It is now out of date and will soon disappear. Look at Psalms 102 verse 25. It says, long ago, you laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you remain forever. They will wear out like old clothing. You will change them like a garment and discard them. But you are always the same. You will live forever. The children of your people will live in security. Their children's children will, will children's children will thrive in your presence. See that? When you get a chance, y'all, you read Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 34. Then you read James 4 and 14. Then read Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 3 through 13. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 34. James chapter 4, verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 3 through 13. Read those. All right, that's it. That's it about the young man. Isn't that deep? Okay, now we're going to read about the, the woman. All right, it's two stories to the, well, it's four stories, but we're only reading two today. If you go to that link in the Tortillion, you're going to see the Acts of the Holy Apostle Thomas. And when you click on that, it's going to be four stories. And so far, we read about the dragon and the young man, the young man, and now we're getting ready to read the demon that, that dwelt in the woman. OK, so that's what we're getting ready to read now. And it says, and the apostle went into the city and all the multitude accompanying him. And he thought of going to the parents of the young man whom, when they killed by the dragon, he had brought to life for they earnestly entreated him to come to them and enter into their house. And a certain woman, exceedingly beautiful, suddenly uttered a loud cry saying, oh, apostle of the new God who has come into India. And servant of the holy and only good God, for through thee he has proclaimed the savior of the souls that come unto him. And through thee he heals the bodies of those that are punished by the enemy. And thou hast become the cause of life to all who turn to him. Order me to be brought before thee that I may declare to thee what has happened to me. And that perhaps there may be hope to me from thee and those who stand beside thee may have more and more hope in the God whom thou hast proclaimest. For I am not a little, I am not a little tormented by the adversary who has assaulted me for now a period of five years. As a woman, I formerly sat down in peace and peace passed me on all sides and I had nothing to trouble me for of nothing else had I had a care. And it happened on one of those days as I was coming forth from the bath, there met me one like a man troubled and disturbed. And his voice and utterance seemed to me to be indistinct and very weak. And he said, standing over against me, thou and I shall be in one love and we have and we and and we shall have intercourse with each other as a man, it coupled with his wife. And I answered him saying, 
to my betrothed, I consented not, entreating him not to marry me, and to thee which is to have intercourse with me, as it were in adultery. How shall I give myself up? And having thus spoken, went away from him. And to my maid, I said, has thou seen a young man and his shamelessness? How shamelessly and boldly he talks to me. And she said to me, it was an old man. And I saw him and I saw talking with thee. And when I was in my own house, I had supped. My mind suggested me suspicion, especially because he had appeared to me in two forms. So she's telling Apostle Thomas about this young man that came to her, asking her to have sexual intercourse with her. Right? So look at what she's saying. She said, I fell asleep having this same thing in my thoughts. And he came that night and made me share in this filthy commerce. And I saw him when it was day and I fled from him. But according to his want, he came at night and abused me. And now as I, and, and, and now as thou seest me, I have been tormented by him five years and he has not departed from me. But I know I am persuaded that even demons and spirits and avenging deities are subject to thee and trembled at thy prayer. Pray then for me and drive away from me the demon that torments me, that I also may become free and may be brought to my former nature, and I have received the gift that has been granted to my kindred. So now this woman is saying that this demon has been having sex with her at night for five years, tormenting her. So this demon used the form of a man to get at her, right? He's taken away her oil, her countenance, her, the, the, her beauty. You see what I'm saying? Y'all remember how innocent Holly Berry used to look? If you look at the movie Boomerang, Holly Berry used to look real innocent. Now she just looked distraught. She just looks terrible, right? And it says, and the apostle said, O oh, irrespressible wickedness, O oh, shamelessness of the enemy, O oh, the sorcerer that is never at rest, O oh, the ill-favored one, bring to subjection the well-favored, Oh, the many formed one. He appears just as he may wish. See, I'm telling you, the devil can appear with anything or anybody. I remember a friend of mine told me here in Chicago, he was a musician at one time. And he said that the devil came to him twice. He said he was wearing a hat and he was wearing a long trench coat and he didn't have no face. And he said this thing came to him and said, I give you anything you want. Because he's trying to you know, do him like, like he did John Lee Hooker. You ever saw that movie Crossroads? When that guy made the deal with the devil on the crossroads? Yeah, look at this. It says, O many form one, he appears just as he may wish, but his essence cannot be changed. O offspring of the crafty and insatiable one, O oh, bitter tree, which also his fruits are like. O oh, thou who art of the devil, who fights over those who do not belong to him. O oh, thou art the deceit that uses shamelessness. O oh, thou art of the wickedness that creeps like a serpent and art thyself his kindred. And when the apostle had thus spoken, the fiend stood before him. No one seeing him but the woman and the apostle. Y'all see this? The reason why the woman can see him is because the woman has a covenant with this thing. Y'all see that? And it says in a very loud voice, he said to the hearing of all, what have we to do with thee, O apostle of the most high? What have we to do with thee, O servant of Yeshua? What have we to do with thee, O thou that sitteth in counsel with the Holy Spirit? I tell you, these demons know who you, and they know who we are. It says, wherefore does thou wish to destroy us? When our time has not come. Ain't that the same thing they said to Yeshua? They said, why did us come to torment us before our time? Remember that? It says, on what account does thou wish to take away our power? 
For until the present hour, we haven't, we have had hope and time left. What have we to do with thee? Thou hast power over thy own and we have over our own. What dost thou wish to do, uh, use tyrannery against us, and especially thou who teaches others to use tyrannery? Why dost thou want those who do not belong to thee hurt? Um, and if thou wert not satisfied with thy own, why dost thou liken thyself to the Son of God who has done us hurt? See, these demons know. They're not stupid. For thou art like him altogether, just as, just as if thou has been brought forth by him. For we thought to bring him under, also under the yoke, like the rest, but he turned and held us under his hand. For we did not know him, but, but he deceived us by the form which he had put on, and his poverty as he want. For, we, for when we saw him such, we thought him to be a man clothed with flesh, not knowing that it was he, that it was he who makes men live. They talking about Yeshua right now. And he, and he gave us power over our own. And in the time in which we live, we do not let our own go, but to employ ourselves about them. But thou wishes to get more than is necessary or than has been given thee and to overpower us. And having thus spoken, the demon wept, saying, I let thee go, my most loving yoke fellow, whom I have found long ago and, and, and was at rest. I leave thee, my beloved and trusty sister. This is what the demon is saying to the woman now. And it says, in whom I was, I was well pleased. See, that means when these spirits be using people, especially when it comes to sexual things, people are allowing this demon to please them. It's using our bodies. You see what I'm saying? This is why Paul was talking about in the book of Romans chapter six about us being used as instruments of unrighteousness. The enemy will use us as instruments of unrighteousness, y'all. Look, look at what this demon is saying. I'm gonna read it again. It says, and having thus spoken, the demon wept, saying, I let thee go my most lovely yoke fellow, whom I found long ago and was at rest. I leave thee, my beloved and trusty sister, and whom I was what? I was well pleased. What I shall do, I know not, or whom I shall call upon to hear me and protect me, I know what I shall do. I go. I shall go to some place where the fame of this man has not been heard. So this demon is saying, I'm going to go to a place where, where Thomas is not preaching the gospel. Let's stop right there. <laughs> oh, so is this why demons have intra, intra, and has inflated the church? Because the truth is not being preached? Think about it. People wonder, why is it demons over here? Because ain't nobody telling the truth. Somebody has made a covenant with spirits. That's why. Look at what this demon said again. It says, I shall go to some place where the fame of this man has not been heard. And perhaps I shall call thee, my beloved, by a new name. And lifting up his voice, he said, Abide in peace, having received a solemn, but they're greater than I. But I, as I have said, will go away and seek thy like. And if I find her not, I shall return. I shall again return to thee. So that means that this spirit want to try to come back. For I know that when thou art beside this man, thou has an asylum in him. But when he goes away, thou shall be as thou was before he made his appearance. So this demon is saying, well, as long as you hanging around Thomas, I can't deal with you. <laughs> Y'all see this? Woo. It says, and him indeed will thou forget. And to me, there will be a, there will again be opportunity and boldness. 
But now I am afraid of the name of him who has delivered thee. And having thus said, the demon disappeared. Y'all see this? And just when he had disappeared, fire and smoke were seen there and all their presence was struck with amazement. So this demon is saying, look, I'm going to go somewhere else where the gospel of Yeshua is not being preached. But you know, I'll come back, baby. That's what, he, that's what this demon is saying to this woman. You know, if apostle ain't around, you know what I'm saying, baby, I'm going to try to see what I can do with you again. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Woo, the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Y'all see this? See all this stuff they didn't hear? These are stories that we never grew up knowing. It says that the apostles seeing this said to them, nothing strange or unusual has that demon shown, but his own nature. See what I'm saying? It says in which also he shall be burnt up for the fire shall consume him and the smoke of him shall be scattered abroad. And he began to say, oh, Yeshua, the secret mystery, which that which has been revealed to us, thou art he who discloses to us all manner of mysteries who has set me apart from my own companions and who has told me three words which, with which I am set on fire. I cannot tell them to others. Oh, Yeshua, man slain, dead, buried, Yeshua, God of God and Savior, who bringeth the dead to life and healeth those who are diseased. Oh, Yeshua, who appears to be in want and saveth as if in want of nothing catching the fishes for the morning and evening meal and establishing all in abundance with a little bread. Yeshua, who does rest from the toil of the journey as a man and walk upon the waves as Elohim. Yeshua, most high, voice arising from per perfect compassion, savior of all, the right hand of the light overthrowing, hey, overthrowing him that is wicked in his own kind and bringing all his kind into one place. Thou art only, thou art, thou art, thou who art only begotten, the first of born of many brethren, Elohim of Elohim, most high, man despised until now, Yeshua, who overlooketh us, us not when we call upon thee, who has been shown forth to all in human life, who, are, who for our sakes has been judged and kept in prison and free is all that are bound, who has been called a deceiver, who has delivered us thy own from deception. I entreat thee in behalf of those standing and entreating thee and those that believe in thee for they, have, for they pray to obtain thy gifts, being of good hope in thine aid, occupying thy place of refuge in thy majesty. They give audience so as to hear from us the words that has been spoken to them. Let thy peace come and dwell in them that they may be purified from their former deeds and may put off the old man with their deeds and put on the new now declared to them by me. Wow. Look at this. And having laid hands on them, he blessed them saying, the grace of our Lord Yeshua be upon you forever. And they said, amen. And the woman begged of him saying, apostle of the most high, give me the seal that that foe may not come back upon me again. See that? So because she heard that demon say, I'll come back. Look at this. He said, then he made her come near him and putting his hand upon her, he sealed her in the name of the father, the son and the Holy Spirit. And many others also were sealed alone with her. And the apostle ordered his servant to set out a table and they set out a bench when, which they found here, found there. And having spread a linen cloth upon it, he put, his, he put on it the bread of the blessing. And the apostle standing by and said, Yeshua, son of Elohim, who has deemed us worthy to communicate of the Icarus of thy sacred body. And honorable blood, behold, we are embroiled by the thanksgiving and invocation of thy sacred name. Come now and communicate with us. And he began to say, come perfect compassion. Come communion with mankind. Come that thou knowest the mystery of the chosen one. Come that thou communicatest in all combats of the noble combatant. Come peace 
that revealeth the great things of all greatness. Come, thou that disclosest secrets and maketh manifest things not to be spoken. The sacred dove which thou hast brought forth twin young. Come, thou, thou secret mother, come. come. Thou art manifest in thy deeds. Mm. And give us joy and rest to those who are united to thee. Come and communicate with us in this Icarus, which we made in thy name and in love, in which we are united and calling upon thee. And having thus said, he made the sign of the cross upon the bread and broke it and began to distribute it. And he first gave it to the woman saying, this shall be to thee for remission of sins and the ransom of everlasting transgressions. And after her, he gave also to the others who have received the seal. That's it, y'all. That's the story. <laughs> it's a beautiful story. Stories we hadn't grown up with, but the Lord is allowing us to know about them now. So that's why the Bible says that we shall be sealed with the Holy Spirit of what? Promise. The remnant is being sealed. We're sealed. We're sealed. So those are good stories, y'all. But that demon, these spirits and demons, they know where to dwell. All right. All right, y'all. That's it's been a it's been a blessing <laughs> um, to share with you all. Um God bless you all, love you all. Uh continue to pray for me as I pray for you all. And um we're just going to continue to let the Lord do what he's going to do. And I love you all dearly in Yeshua's name. And we're going to pray, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that what we heard is going to create in us a clean heart, renewing us a right spirit. Uh, we thank you that it's going to convert our soul. It's going to bring us deliverance. It's going to bring us wholeness. It's going to bring us restoration. It's going to Give us the strength to fight the good fight of faith. And Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing in our life. And we bless you and we honor you in Yeshua's mighty name. God bless you all. I love you all. Uh, Shabbat Shalom in Yeshua's name.